Welcome back everyone, this is Papa Sean, and we are looking at Ark Survival Evolved. We're going to take a look at the patch 233, but we'll also briefly talk about patch 232.4. Alright, so patch 232.4 is the current patch. Patch 233 is coming up, so just so you can get a frame of mind, I'll do another video as soon as 233 releases. Alright, so for 232.4 is the one that just released today. Today is January 15, 2016 and the Dynametrodons and the Karakuru now insulate eggs. So we had talked about in previous patch notes about how Dynametrodons are going to be awesome for incubators. If you are in primitive servers or if you haven't gotten to the air conditioner tech, you can tame a Dimetrodon or a Karakuru. You stick them around the eggs and it will it will help the eggs maintain the proper temperature so incubation can happen. Primitive servers don't have air conditioning systems so they had to resort to fires and uh, uh, the standing fire as well, so the, you know, those are your methods of incubating the eggs, and it's really tedious as you have to actually be there over time. Uh, air conditioner units, or these Dimetrodons Karakuru, you get them inside, you get them in a ring, put the eggs in the middle of the ring, and then the, the eggs can incubate over the long periods of time. Quetzal eggs, for example, are like 14 and a half hours, something crazy like that. So you don't want to have to be babysitting them the entire time. Put them in there, go to sleep, come back at the appropriate time, and your eggs are almost ready to hatch. Alright, so that is 232.4. Now on to discussing the upcoming 233 patch. Alright, so tribe alliances. So another patch, you know, this has been something that's been rolled out and pushed further back. Uh, tribe alliances is going to be really cool. You'll be able to match up with other tribes, uh, form an alliance, go on boss fights and share loot, go into the caves together. Uh, you can do that now, but in having an alliance, it might uh, help back you up. I'm not sure. I, uh, I, expect friendly fire will still be on as it is with your tribe members so you still gotta watch out so you don't hit the alliance by accident but if I think if you're riding dinosaurs they might have the dinosaurs not do damage to alliance damage of dinosaurs, uh, dinosaurs. <laughs> so looking really forward to uh, how that turns out what I think might be interesting is tribe alliances if it allows for different settings pardon me so different settings for your turrets. Like if you can set your turret to not attack alliance members, that would be really key, right? That way you can do joint attacks on other tribes. But what happens when you tell your turrets not to attack alliance members? Well, now your alliance members, if they so chose, could enter into your area and if they're able to break alliance then or even as an alliance member throw out some C4, they can detonate walls and whatnot, get in, feed your tribe members polymer or outright kill them. So there are some opportunities here for shenanigans, uh, some mischief, and uh, violations of trust. So watch out for that with these alliances. Uh, you're going to have to read and uh, understand just what they're going to do. So I'll put out a video as soon as 233 releases gets closer and we have more information. Also, they've got a new weapon out in 233 that's going to be the Electric Prod Stunner Weapon. So that ought to be pretty fun, right? You know, Cow Prod. <laughs> And uh, if you can stun somebody, this will be pretty cool for like if you wanted to not kill your targets, but you just wanted to not render them unconscious. So big alliances picking on little alliances might stun them rather than kill them because you know it's not really fair for them to kill them, but you know just showing their dominance um, or just uh, having tribe versus tribe combat where you you're trying to see who's the more dominant tribe without loss of life. That might be another style of doing it. Alright, so prod stunner weapon, you might be able to use it also on dinosaurs to knock them unconscious, so looking forward to that. If, it, if it's going to reduce the damage you do to something, then pretty neat. Also, a uh, prod stun weapon might not require any kind of ammo, in which case it would use durability when you used it, but uh, you won't have to worry about trank darts or tranks that you drop off your dinosaurs that you're trying to tame inside a box, lock up and, and hit them with a prod until they're knocked unconscious. All right. Next up, we've got some SWAT style armor, the assault armor tier, the new armor set. That looks pretty cool. Um, I imagine it kind of goes with the riot shield, where you currently can have the shield where you see through uh, the polymer that's used in that one. So I'm gonna come out on a limb here and assume that polymer is going to be a pretty uh, heavy requirement here on these sets of armor. The uh, flak armor requires mostly cementing paste and the metal ingots. This will likely require a lot of the polymer, uh, a lot of cementing paste to be my other assumption there. I'm not quite sure what else they'd use. They might use some pelts or fur uh, and associate with it, likely uh, uh, hide as well, and fiber. All right, so SWAT style armor, uh, I almost expect it to be a little bit lighter weight, but a lot more uh, durability. 
and improve save games, save and load times. That's nice uh, for those that have uh, private servers. Also, all current items are now on the master items ID array. Okay, well they, they've been reporting that on multiple patches, so I'm not really sure. You know, it says all current items are now on the master items ID array. It sounds like it's already done in this patch 233 is upcoming. So uh, key items there again: the tribal alliances. Uh, we talked about the weapon. Now, the one thing we haven't yet talked about is the Gallimimus. So I'm saving this for last. The Gallimimus is a three-seater passenger saddle. Okay, so the Gallimimus is going to be a very, very fast and far-jumping dinosaur. I didn't think it was going to be all that large. I'm going to switch over to the dossier. So here's the official dossier for the Gallimimus. If you see the, the pictures here, it indicates, you know, like the Carnotaurus is chasing after this Gallimimus and then this looks like a rex so it looks like the gallimimus is kind of like a medium sized dino if that's the case an argent should be able to pick it up definitely a quetzal and uh... they've got three check marks next to the leap so it's going to be able to jump really far and uh, the clock time so it's going to be moving really fast this gallimimus is going to be how you get across the arc uh... very fast and with bringing passengers and that's pretty neat and what you can do with this think about the the kangaroo where you could hop around and you could run and gun Gallimimus, very much the same thing. You've got one rider uh, driving it, and then you can have two people potentially on the back of this thing. I'm not sure how they're going to be situated, but I'm hoping that they'll be able to fire from their seats, much like you can with a kangaroo. If not, then this is, this is just a glorified transport, and you could do the same thing with uh, Quetzals. So just have somebody land their uh, pteranodon on the back of a Quetzal, and you're doing the same thing. Or you could pick up somebody with the claws of a Quetzal, Argent, pteranodon. So... Gallimimus for it to be any value. I'm hoping that they allow you to fire while in the saddle as passengers. And uh, let's take a closer look at the the dossier itself. I'll read that out, and then we'll follow up with a little bit more theory crafting from the notes there. So in the wild, when someone asks me what the fastest creatures on the island are, Gallimimus is always a contender. Unlike the island's many armored animals, Gallimimus has huge strong defenses for the ability to outrun pretty much anything. A skittish herbivore, Gallimimus even looks more nerv uh, nervous when it's eating in, in a peaceful, clear meadow. Having no real way to harm predators, it simply runs away and uses its agility to stay safe. I've even seen Gallimimus outrun speed-trained Ultraraptors. Domesticated, there are two general camps on the use of the tamed Gallimimus. One camp thinks that their inability to actually harm hostile creatures and their inability to harvest most resources makes them primarily a burden to the tribe. The other camp thinks that their extreme speed and ability to jump long distances is among the best for scouting and exploring or just making a quick getaway. Alright, so scouting, exploring, you'll be able to cover quite a big distance. If you got multiple bases, perhaps this is the transport you use to get back and forth. Personally, I prefer a Quetzal with speed trained as well as a Pteranodon if you want to go super fast. Alright, so I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Please mash the like button, subscribe, and share. These things help me out tremendously. It really does. And as I said, it's free when you subscribe. All it does is let your YouTube know that you're interested in videos that I've created. And so you'll also have uh, notifications indicating you on YouTube that there are other videos available now to watch. And you can also check out the channel. There's lots of videos on there. We've got base raids and uh, more dossiers on dinosaurs that have yet not been released, as well as some that have and uh, patch notes um, so please check it out and thank you very much for watching I'll catch you next time